let's skip ahead to um, this slide here. This this is figure 2-32 on page 42 of your textbook. The top of this picture shows an electron micrograph of the slice of the retina and it's beautiful. Uh, what you see at the top are the receptors, rods and cones, and then you see a layer of bipolar cells and a layer of ganglion cells. And if you look at the little cartoon drawing underneath, you'll see um, a more uh, a stylized version of what you're looking at. You have the rods and cones, right? Uh, horizontal cells, which help the rods and cones work together. Then you have bipolar cells, which take the uh, output of the rods and cones and feeds it to the ganglion cells. And then you have amacrin cells. These amacrin cells also help the ganglion cells work together. Um, so you have this multi-layered uh, network uh, that does the analysis of light, uh, of gathering light. Remember that in the fovea, the cones are each connected to one uh, bipolar cell and one ga uh, one bipolar cell and one ganglion cell, right? So it makes a very fine, uh, 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 it makes it, th this makes it uh, able to do very fine uh, levels of acuity, very fine levels of res resolution. Whereas the cones uh, share, uh, up to 150 cones can share uh, one ganglion cell. Uh, it means that the cones, or I'm, yeah, uh, uh, it means that the cones are, I'm sorry, the rods, the rods uh, share, uh, each rod shares uh, uh, 100, uh, with 150 other rods, one ganglion cell, um, which is great for sensitivity. It increases the chance that one of those ganglion cells is going to be sending a signal off that it saw something because it's got 150 rods looking for uh, light, but it comes at a cost of acuity, right? Uh, 150 rods cannot possibly give you the same level of detail, visual acuity, uh, as one cone connected to one ganglion cell. Um, let's see. So here's a, here's a, here's that uh, principle illustrated here in this slide, right? Uh, we have in this picture we have one, two, three, four, five rods all communicating with one uh, ganglion cell, all synapsing with one ganglion cell. Uh, if any one of these guys, if any one of these rods sees a photon of light, they're going to fire and, and excite this ganglion cell. Ultimately they're going to excite this ganglion cell. Uh, if enough of them see a light then it'll uh, send a response. Uh, like I said, um, this increases your uh, um, sensitivity to light, but it decreases your visual acuity because instead of having, uh, you know, instead of having one dot, one, one cell per, um, per pixel, <laughs> or per dot, right? Uh, you have basically five cells that are all looking uh, for the same spot, okay? And the cones here, they're all organized to where uh, each one is, uh, synapses ultimately with one ganglion cell. Um, so the rods have better acuity. The cones have better acuity than the rods. Uh, all of the all of the uh, cone uh, all of the fovea is made up of cones, and those cones have a one-to-one -one wiring between themselves and their ganglion cells, uh, which means that you can break things down into very fine levels of detail. Uh, of course, the trade-off is that the cones need more light. Right? They need more light because each one is uh, communicating with a uh, with one taking up one entire ganglion cell. So a lot more information, a lot more light. It needs to be uh, uh, um, shown, or, or a lot more light needs to be used by the cones in order to uh, be able to pick up those details. Um, notice here. This is a good example of what happens to your visual acuity as it gets darker, right? Uh, notice on the top shelf, uh, we can read the titles pretty well, but on the bottom shelf, not so well. Because it's darker, we've lost a lot of our visual acuity because we're relying uh, primarily on 
uh, rods at that point. And remember, rods have very low visual acuity. Um, here's, a, here's an example from uh, your book. This is on page 44. Uh, of your textbook, um, and this is um, this is uh, uh, an illustration of how the the, the detail between um, uh, the 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 differences in in being able to detect details between rods and cones. Okay, look at the top at A. We have two. Um, two different stimuli, right? In the first, on the left-hand side, we have two stimuli coming in and stimulating this rod and this rod. And then in this example, we have the same two stimuli, but instead they're stimulating this rod and this rod. But all of the outputs of these rods go to only one ganglion cell. So it doesn't matter if this guy is stimulated and this guy is stimulated, or this guy is stimulated and this guy is stimulated. It's going to look the same. It's going to look exactly the same because ultimately those two photons of light are going to cause uh, this ganglion cell to fire, right? So the five rods don't distinguish, don't help this ganglion cell to distinguish which one of them is firing. It just says, oh, one of my five or two of my five, uh, this ganglion cell just says, hey, you know, two of my five rods fired, I'm going to fire. I don't know which five they were, but two of them fired, right? So to this ganglion cell, these two dots and these two dots are identical. So you lose some of the information as to which spot of the retina is getting stimulated. But then look at the cones, right? The cones have a one-to-one -one relationship between themselves and their ganglion cells. This pattern of these two uh, photons lighting up these two neighboring uh, cones versus this photon and this photon lighting up these cones this is going to make a distinct pattern all right notice it's the same pattern on both sides right but notice that this circuit here is not able to detect that pattern because uh, uh, it doesn't have the sensitive it doesn't have the uh, level of detail because these ganglion cells are all sh are all responsible for firing for these five guys whereas each one of these ganglion cells is responsible for only one cone so there we, we are able with our cones because of the way they're wired uh, to their ganglion cells we're able to detect very fine detail the difference between this pattern and the difference between this pattern um, early events are powerful so things that happen to you early in life things that you get exposed to early in life affect your ability to process information later. Uh, the example they give here, um, or I'm sorry, let me say that differently. Uh, the, early, the early stages, the early stages of the visual processing system are important, right? So the lens, the cornea, and the retina. Basically, that's anything that doesn't make it through that system cleanly is not going to get processed later on down the pipeline right so those early stages of light going through the cornea passing through the pupil passing through the lens hitting the retina and stimulating rods and cones those first stages of vision are really important right and the example that's given in your textbook is the Hubble Space Telescope you guys know the Hubble I'm sure I hope you've heard of the Hubble Space Telescope right it's this giant telescope that we launched into space uh, I think about 20 years ago or so um, but when it first went up uh, they, they, they the, the space shuttle got, uh, they sent it up they unpacked it put it deployed it into orbit and everybody was happy but about a day or so after they started receiving data for it they realized something horrible uh... the scope was sending back blurry images uh... if you look here uh... this was the uh... <laughs> image of a galaxy that was being sent back um, and it turned out that the mirror that is used to reflect the light that is gathered was not uh, built correctly it was not ground correctly those mirrors have to be perfectly smooth like within microns uh, they, they can't be any any uh, 
sorts of bends or folds in those mirrors. Well, it turns out this mirror was deformed. So what they had to do uh, was on another shuttle mission, they had to basically take a big contact lens and put it on top of the mirror. And after they did that, the camera was able to return this, this image here much clearer. Okay, so even in spite of all the high-powered uh, computers that were on board the Hubble, in spite of, you know, the 200 PhDs that were working on those images and the massive computer power that we have here on Earth, in spite of all that, we ended up with this. All because that lens, that mirror at the front of the Hubble was broken. And that's the same with people, right? If, if there's something wrong with the front system, uh, nothing else is going to work well, okay? Uh, this picture is from page 45 on your textbook. Um, the honeybees... Right. Honeybees can see ultraviolet light. Uh, we can't, but they can. The image on A is on the, on the image A here is what a black and white picture of a flower. Right. Image B is the same exact flower, but it's photographed through an ultraviolet filter. Okay, and it shows us the patterns that uh, show up when you look at ultraviolet light. If you'll notice. Uh, the patterns are sort of essentially lighting uh, surrounding a center here. And basically what that signal to the bee is, hey, you know, here's the flags. And in the center is where you can come and get some uh, pollen or to get some nectar. And once you get that nectar, uh, I'm going to put some pollen here and you pick that pollen up and carry it off and, 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 to, uh, to, and, and uh, distribute it to other flowers, right? Um, babies. We can do research on babies. We can even do research on uh, visual research on babies as young as three months old. How do you how do you do research on a baby that's three months old? For example, remember how we talked about how you can uh, tell the difference in uh, horizontal and vertical lines, how close together they are. We can do that with babies. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do you do that? Because babies can't talk, right? You can't say, okay, which one, you know, tell me when you can't see the lines uh, apart anymore. <laughs> babies don't talk. But, however, one thing babies do very, very reliably is they like to look at new and novel things. And they prefer looking at certain things, okay? Uh, it's called pre preferential looking. So you can measure how long a baby spends looking at something. And that's an indicator that it's something new and that the baby sees something there that it has never seen before. Okay, uh, That's one way that we uh, 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 get information on babies. The other way is through a visual evoked potential. Uh, we can do brain recording by basically putting a little cap on a baby that has electrodes all around. And there are certain uh, electrical signals, brain waves, that are emitted when visual information is getting processed. And we can measure those in babies. Okay, So here's an example of the... Of the uh, um, a preferred looking technique every baby every baby normal babies will look spend more time looking at this than at this because this is nothing this is just a blob this is a much more interesting pattern to 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 a baby to anybody but especially to babies if you show this to a baby uh, if you show this stimulus to a baby, they will spend much, much more time looking at this as opposed to this, which tells us that they can see a difference between this and this. And then all you have to do is keep bringing those lines closer and closer together, or making, you know, making the gray bigger and bigger so the lines are thinner and thinner, closer and closer together, until the baby doesn't look at either one or looks at both of them equally. At that point, uh, where the baby stops fo focusing mostly on one, that's the threshold. That's where you say, okay, that's the cutoff point where that baby can no longer detect a difference. Okay, um, And here's a chart showing some data from one of those studies. Right, So we have, look at this. This is like a one-month-old baby. You can do this with one-month-old babies. I, I did this with my kids. I was able to show them different things when they were like, you know, three or four weeks old, and and it works. I mean, if you get it close enough, because newborn babies can only see about that far, clearly, because that's the distance between the uh, 
a nursing on the mother's breast and the mother's face. That's as far as they can see. So as long as you do it kind of close, they, uh, 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 a three or four week old baby has no problem with it. Um, but if you look at this, right, uh, and this is from page 46 of your textbook, right, um, both of these, uh, this, this graph here is from the visual evoked potential where we attach, um, where, where we put a little cap on the baby that has electrodes that measure the brain, brain wave activity. And this curve here is from the uh, visual uh, pre preference, uh, the way they call it, the preferential looking te technique. Uh, and you'll notice they are, they match beautifully. They are identical in shape, uh, which is telling us that, uh, that both of them together tell us that we are right on target, that we are definitely detecting, we are definitely measuring our dependent variable that we want to measure, which is visual acuity, okay? Uh, notice it's a little, it's a bit higher with the evoked potential. Uh, that's because, you know, this is, uh, the, the, the amount of time a baby spends looking at one stimulus versus another is a much rougher measure, uh, than the, than the, I'm sorry, than the, uh, than the evoked potential. Um, so you're going to get more sensitive, uh, uh, uh you're going to get more sensitive measures here to where the baby actually, you're able to measure, uh, um, much higher cycles. In other words, you're, you're, you're going to be able to capture more higher visual acuity with the evoked potentials, right? Um, the other thing, too, in, 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 in developmental, right, babies' eyes, right, aren't like adult eyes at all. Babies' eyes still have a lot of developing to do when they're born, right? If you look at a baby's, the cone in a baby's eyes versus an adult cone, uh, it's like they're two completely different neurons, right? The uh, the baby's cones are much uh, fatter and larger than the adult cone. And if you look from the top down, uh, this is the cones organized in their lattice, all looking for their... Uh, remember, the cones are linked one cone to one ganglion cell, but look at how... Uh, many cones we babies have versus how many cones we have. Um, what do you think is going to be different here? Well, babies have less visual acuity because uh, they have these huge cones, right? <laughs> that whereas in in this spot here, babies have one cone. It looks like we have what uh, two or three, right? Cones inside four maybe even where one of those fits so our visual acuity as adults is much higher than newborn babies uh, of course newborn babies don't need that much visual acuity right because they're babies and all they do is eat so uh, and poop <laughs> and they only need to see be able to see about that far because they're looking at faces and they're learning faces and learning voices